Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today, we're doing a driveway renovation. We're gonna be doing a drop curb on this driveway, extending it out, knocking down this wall. As you can see, we started also excavating out because we were building a carport, excavation shit city. We're gonna be moving all that dirt around the back to fill it up. And right here, we're also gonna be extending out this carport here. And uh, later on, we're gonna be building a wall up there. It's gonna be fun. Lots of stuff is happening over here. Right now, they're just measuring out all the places yeah. to be digging and they're putting dowels into the existing concrete so it stays level. Something going down here as well. What, what is that, Robert? It's, uh, they call it div uh, divining. Uh, some people know how to get water this way and an old fella taught me how to find services this way. Really? Yeah, so, so it's not 100%. They can't replicate this in controlled environment, but okay. it works very well for me. Show me. Wow. So Detected electricity. I'm not sure what it is, oh. uh, how it works. So it's approximate, it's not 100%. Okay, so somewhere around here, we've got the service. Now, 300 deep maximum. And just to prove it, there is the rain and going down is a stormwater pipe. So he's probably right. We had to find gas pipes that were, nobody knew where they were. And this old fella showed us how to use the, the binding rods. thinking, what on earth are you doing? Uh, it was That's crazy. We Massive areas are uh, size of a uh, couple of vacuum tools and you don't know where anything is. Wow. Is that just a normal piece of wire? Yeah, just a normal piece of wire. So this is the main guy, Corey. Corey, what are you up to here from OSM? Uh, mate, we're uh, setting up some concrete. Work. At this stage, we're just getting it all dug out, throwing in some formwork. And uh, you can see the boys down here are scratching that out so that we can get the boxing in along there. The digger's going pretty full on at the moment. But it's all going nicely actually. Right by about lunchtime, we'll probably have most of it all set up. And this is only a two day job? Uh, yeah, two or three days. Two or three days. It'll be probably a day set up and then we should get it all poured in one day. Uh, and then it'll be just coming back and putting some cuts and tidying up and everything like that. But yeah, it's uh, probably two to three days. And how important is it to drill holes in the existing concrete? So, so the idea of that is that what you do is you put steel rods into that existing concrete. And so if you can imagine that you've got two pieces like that, if you don't, over time, you'll get settlement in the ground, so the concrete will move up and down. So the idea of that is that you're connecting the two together so it doesn't move like so that. Solid, so it yeah, so it, it stops together. it moving up and down. So we'll still compact all this ground, like you'll see later on with a, with a little machine. And uh, that, that compacts the ground, which is so important. And uh, But that is also another thing that stops it moving as well. Because, I it. mean, obviously you can't control what the ground's doing underneath the concrete to a point. But uh, you'll see later on, this will have steel rods stuck in it. It will be tied into the mesh. It's all locked in. So that's the idea. And right now you're just working on making sure it's all level and the, the yeah. water will flow in a certain direction? Exactly, yeah. You can sort of see now around the walls, we've marked some heights. And so that's the finished level of the concrete. So what we'll do now is we'll grade it all so that you've got your 100 mils of concrete and it's all compacted and all nice. And so everything runs out. So these lines here are the lines of our boxing yeah. where our, or our formwork where it's going in. And I'm setting these up now so that everything is graded out to the front. So the, the, this will be the next step, putting the formwork in, and then it will be the final grade of him going through with the machine and us uh, breaking it all out and compacting it. Got it. And so that will be finished and ready for laying in the mesh. And what's that big machine for? That thing? Yeah. That's a laser level. So the idea of that is that it actually sets a level plane around the wall and you've got a receiver, which is this thing here. Oh, got it. And so that the idea of that is this is dead level with that so when i go up and down it should pick it up so you can sort of hear it there yeah and when it kind of flat lines that's when it's level so so the trick is is that i'm going through and i'm working out what your existing levels are at the moment i'm making sure that if this is at this height here and i find that that's level then i can take that height and transfer it over to the wall and I can mark that height and i can lift it or drop it depending it. on how i want the concrete to run all right so it's clever. Yeah. All right. It's, it's a laser level. So you've got different types. You've got spirit levels, laser levels, dumpy levels. So that there's a spirit level. 
So that's the same sort of thing. See, that's the bubble is what is level. So if it's in the middle of those two lines, then you know that it's level. Okay, so you, there's just different instances where you right. use it. You know, you might use this where you're doing a little area. So I use the laser, uh, the spirit level just to mark this in around here. And then a laser level is just handy because you can do it. You know, you can have the laser level set up 30 metres that way. Got it. And you can transfer that height so all the way across the distances side. And that's like when yeah. you're ready. Yeah. All right, thanks, man. I'll let you get back to it. Yeah, yeah. If you need any help. Yeah, I'm mate, no up. worries. I'll wait till we're breaking out all the concrete and you can start lifting it all I'm out. looking forward to smashing that wall. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you can do that soon. No all problem. right. <laughs> thanks. All right, man. mate. No problem. Cool, that's the rebar going wow. in. Wow. So much, isn't it? It's relatively new because only the top layer is a bit rusty. But most of it looks nice. So I'm about to have my turn on the JCB. Let's see if I can do it. <laughs> I did something. <laughs> that was really cool. Oh, strong man, look at that. <laughs> I'm here with Caden. Caden, what are you up to right now? Uh, I'm drilling some dowels for the concrete. So what's a dowel? A dowel is like the well, rebar or rio. Okay, so thick. You drill it into the concrete. I mean, I think you might have been just, just talking to Dad about it. But um, uh, it goes about this far into the concrete and make sure that the concrete doesn't move. Yeah. So I'll drill three in, drill three in here and all around the driveway so it just ensures that the concrete doesn't move around and over time it sinks and stuff so the Rio stops that from happening. How hard is it to drill? Is it oh well see because this is a bigger drill bit so that yeah. takes a while. But uh, depending on the size of your Rio, depends on how, how long it takes you to drill a dowel, but uh, yeah, this will take me a while. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that's where it's he not, gets his big muscles favorite. from. Yeah. <laughs> it's not my favourite job, but yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so they're currently setting up the forms. It's going to be fun to see what the actual pad will look like once the forms are ready. But a sense, isn't it? Yeah. Start to see the oh my gosh. Going. It's gonna look even better when the concrete goes on. I can't believe it looks this yeah. nice already. <laughs> it's massive space. Yeah, it is huge, isn't it? You don't realise when it's all like messy, but it's still <laughs> Over on this side right now, they're grading the land to make sure that the water would run off at the moment. So you got the big guy, Rob. He's going to be moving a bit of dirt, I guess, to pack it on this side over here. Just want to make sure that the angle is running away from the house. Set strip drain up, mesh in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's still a lot. He was just saying that it's really good to, uh, just to get the workers moving because you're paying by the hour and it's good practice for the actual concreting job because with the concrete, once you start pouring the concrete, it sets really fast. So you trying to get them in the same attitude of go, 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 go. Whereas, you know, lots of tradies here in Australia, they're kind of like smoko every five minutes. <laughs> but kind of the attitude he's got with his crew is like, go, 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 good practice. So they get used to getting things done fast. And apparently there's still like another few hours worth of work to do. We've still got to cut out the driveway, knock down the wall, put in the drain grate. So they're going to be here for a while. All right, so I'm here with Dave from Niche Creations and he's helping out with the concrete and job. So what is that used for? And you've been concreting and bricklaying for the last 20 years, 
So what's the most interesting part of this job or the hardest part? Is it making sure that it's all level? Yeah, getting everything level and get a real nice, it's all in the prep work. What's that stuff for? Uh, this stuff is able flex, so we put it on the walls so that it gives uh, a bit of room for the concrete to move so it doesn't butt mm -hmm. into the wall. Right now, Dave is putting down the amazing reinforcing metal, and I've got to say, it looks gorgeous. Like it looks so nice and neat and clean and tidy. And I think he must be just joining them together to give it that extra strength. <laughs> Look at that! It's a talent. Is that easy to do? Nah, it's hard. I think that's hard, isn't it? <laughs> like anything right you know yeah. you, you get used to it over time it's not fun on your back you know, yeah. your back it's probably a bit hard on the back are some concretes easier to cut than others if yeah they're softer or yeah something? yeah like if they haven't you know if it's weaker the concrete then it'll cut a lot easier yeah where that's older so it's pretty hard, it's hard. so you really got to you know put your back into it but it helps having a big saw yeah how big is your saw that one over there so that's the biggest size as far as i know that you can yeah. get that's a handheld one so, the rest of them are actually machines that you roll. Yeah, or the bigger, you can have big ones that you push along and all that sort of stuff, but just transporting them is yeah, just a hard. nightmare. So, so this is handy, it's yeah. really handy. Yeah, it's heavy. Yeah, it's heavy, yeah. <laughs> it's heavy, <laughs> I can confirm. <laughs> the weight helps with the cutting though because it pushes down into the concrete. Yeah, okay. So when, I, when I'm pushing, a lot of it's actually just lifting it and the weight's pushing down into it. Got it, so you're so, using the momentum from the machine yeah. to cut it. Next steps, just waiting for him to get the rest of that fill out and then we'll rip this concrete out then. And then once that's sort of done, then we're really kind of close to the end of getting it all set up. So you can see the guys have started to put the steel in and everything now. Uh, this will be the last stages of it once we start ripping this out. So yeah, it's a lot of work, yeah. a lot of work in it. What kind of steel are you using? Uh, so that's 72, so it's like a 7.2 mil Got gauge. It. That's steel. what it means then. Yeah. Uh, chairs to keep your, get your concrete cover, so all the mesh is has even cover around it. Otherwise, if it's on the ground, it's really not serving its purpose. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you know how often to put them on the floor, or is it like... Just because everything's there, all 200 spaces. Yeah. So you just... You just try calculate and, it. Yeah, so it's going to... When you walk on it, it's not going to squash down. Got just kind of, if they're too far apart, then it, it'll all just sag down. Ah. So you sure. kind of keep them. To keep it at least straight. Yeah. Adjusted. Keep it all up in the air. Here you can see that the dowels are connected to some of the rebars to give it strength so that when they do do the concrete pouring is there. Another fun thing I can see is they put foam against the house block itself so that there's a bit of, I guess, laxity between the concrete when they pour it and the house so if there's any shifting, it's got some maneuverability. So these small things you don't think of but actually make a lot of difference in the long run. I would say it's really weird seeing this land being level. This used to be, uh, a big massive jungle when we first got this place and then it turned to a giant heap right behind me and it just feels so much clearer not having the mountain, the stacks because ever since we did the three phase upgrades it's looked a bit like a bomb site so it's nice seeing it You know what, it feels so good for my feet 
feet up. These wonderful people are doing all of the work. And do you know what? They're doing such a stunning job. I don't even think if I did work with them, I couldn't do such a good job. So, yeah, I'm but very pleased. Get used to this. I'd love to help, though. I really would. But I think I'll just get in their way. Mm. Yeah. I agree. This is so exciting. They're just about to pull up the concrete from the floor, and it might just snap in half. Or it might not. We'll see. Ah, look at that! That is so cool! Look at that! Oh my goodness, that just came right up! Just take a look at that! That just literally just pulled up right away. almost wrong to be throwing this in the bin because how much they charge for that little concrete slab oh we can make so much money <laughs> if you look at that driveway there the concrete slab is actually on top of the rebar so they did a, a poor job so over here the way they set up here they put it on these little caps so the concrete goes around the mesh whereas if you come on here you can see those lines there that's where the rebar is so it's right on the base. All right, guys, get ready. We're finally gonna fix a wrong that I made a mistake. I made my driveway wall too narrow. So we're cut it in half. And now we're gonna knock this left part down. We've got the big digger. He's gonna come over and he's gonna knock it down. So I'm sorry, Mr. Trump. Bring down the wall. <laughs> Telling you this this is what it should have been from the start we did have a, a little debate on how wide the driveway should be but we didn't know it was possible to actually extend the driveway make it wider so we just stuck with the original one and it's this is a proper size one I feel like I can actually might be able to yeah it does Ooh. feel so much more like you can breathe I want to keep that rebar <laughs> hey that's cool look at your rebar there it is Pointless being at the bottom, but it's valuable. It's probably uh, make some money recycling this. That thick one, and that—that that is the best. That is the best one. Kind of want it. So it's just pure concrete with a little lip. So now they're going to be cutting up the front curb. So the big boss, he's going to be dragging it around a bit, and then. The, the other big boss, he's going to be cutting it. And for this part here, just got to make sure that this follows a gradient for the council specification. Hopefully we'll be able to like go on the yeah. drive without scratching yeah. the car now. Asphalt over here on the floor, and then over here they just got like a curl for the curb, and that's what was our issue for a really long time. We kept hitting it; it just wasn't ever flat. We couldn't get a good gradient for the car, but it's so nice now because all they're going to do is just make it nice and smooth and do us like a gentle upscale so that we can park the car comfortably. Awesome, mate. So done for today. Yeah, done for today. We um, have everything ready to go. Or well, not everything ready for the pour, but you can see everything's excavated out. The mesh is all in, minus the piece at the front there. But we'll be back probably tomorrow or Wednesday morning, and we'll be just, just chucking in the strip drain, and yeah, we'll be getting into it on Wednesday. Right. So, so I just need to make sure that the gate is left open for you yes. to come in either tomorrow or Wednesday to do the drain grade. Yeah, that'll be great I've if you can do that. I've been waiting for that job. I've practicing. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty standard, what we do, you know. Sometimes it's ripping out concrete like we did today, other times it's just, yeah, like a new build or whatever, but 
I think you'd, you'd agree it all kind of went pretty well. Yeah, it looks you good. Reckon? Yeah, you got a good team, man. I like it. Thanks, mate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. very logical. I do actually yeah. have a bonus question for you. I can yeah. always exclude from the video. What is the difference between the rusted one and the non-rusted one? Oh, uh, nothing really. Like, it, with the rust, as soon as it kind of gets inside the concrete, this is what I've read. Don't quote me on this. <laughs> so I'll, I'll cut this out. Yeah. No, but, record it for the warranty no, purposes. Yeah, 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 totally. So, so, so with the rust, once it's actually inside the concrete, it actually creates a, an alkaline environment and it actually doesn't rust anymore. All right, but it's got to be in the concrete. Yeah, yeah. So you can see why when it was on the ground over there, it doesn't help when it's sitting on the ground. You can actually see the ground underneath it had rust yeah. because the mesh was sitting on the ground. You know, well, So that's what concrete embedded, cancer is. So yeah. So, so when they talk about concrete cancer, it's when the actual, um, when the rust inside the concrete, uh, I mean, sorry, the steel inside the concrete rusts. So that's why you've got to have it halfway in the concrete and you've got to have a gap against the, the boxing as well. You'll see there's a gap about that far off. Yeah. There you go. You feel like you've just been educated? Yeah, yeah, it was uh, very good. <laughs> Do you at least get a discount for being rusty served rusted steel. ones? Actually, I charge extra. You charge? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not talking about me getting it. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about you from your supplier. Oh, no, 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 you no. You don't. No. Oh. That's just how you get it. Sometimes oh. it's filthy rusty. But right. It's just, it's not often you get it where it's all nice and shiny. I was surprised myself. Yeah. Yeah, because I always see them so rusted on the, the Yeah. Rounds. Oh, this will, even by Wednesday, that'll probably be starting to rust. Oh, you know? is it? So, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, come back Wednesday, man. Can't anyway. wait. Uh, right, thanks so much, right, I'm gonna man. Go home, mate. See you soon. Yeah. Alright, so as you saw, massive job on our hands here. You can see that it's almost finished up, laid out. They actually had to have to come back another day just to finish off the, the ending here. We did run into only one little tiny issue. Not their fault, it was the council's fault. There was actually two caps here and uh, concrete that called up the council. They said they have no idea what it is. And it took them about two hours to talk to the right guy. And apparently it's like a a place where you can put water inside or something like that if it floods or something like that so they don't know what's sure but they, they don't know 100 percent what it's for or when it's been used it was covered up completely in grass but they left it there and they said it will just be part of the driveway they'll just put two flush caps to hide it away so that's not that bad i'm just impressed this is this is what it looks like with the curb cut out i've never seen a cut out curb before it's just uh that's the asphalt right there and then they're gonna lay new concrete very very friendly guys and they did a lot of, lot of hard work. And uh, remember this wall? It was wider. Now we have a, a nice, beautiful, thin wall right there. I'm looking forward to building up myself. I've got the bricks there already, the blocks, nice and solid from the mortar. And we're going to have concrete all over this place. It's going to look nice, I hope. And this is the old driveway, keeping it. Seems to be very, very strong, even though it hasn't really been set up right, as you can see the the rebar inside it is right to the base, so it's not done well. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be interesting when the concrete starts getting poured. I can't wait for that. So Wednesday, they're gonna come back, gonna finish the pour, and we're excited to see what it looks like. So be sure to stay tuned for the next episode where we get the concrete poured, and hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show. Never seen one. So guys, as you know, one of my favorite hobbies of all time is looking at the dirt. <laughs> and just check out this. So not only did we manage to fill up the back of our garden with all of the dirt that we pulled up from here, but just check out how much filling we did for the skip here. So this is all the concrete. And genuinely, I didn't think that this skip would get so full, but it's filled up to the brim with concrete, with a bit of soil, with a bit of rebar sticking out of it. This is a huge skip and we managed to fill it up. Impressive.